Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be comparing Kaspersky and Bitdefender Free Antivirus. Keep in mind these are two of my favorite free antivirus products these days. There are many reasons for that. Partly they don't come with a lot of ads and pop-ups, unlike some of the other traditional free AV programs. Plus both of these have excellent signatures. As you might know, Kaspersky and Bitdefender are some of the best companies in the world when it comes to that. So today we're going to take them head to head and see who wins in this battle of free AV solutions. As you can see, both the UIs are very nice and easy to use. They're very simplistic, bare bones, not a lot of settings. There isn't much to change and I haven't changed anything. So as you can see, Bitdefender, the protection is turned on. There's really nothing else to do here. In Kaspersky, I'm going to show you that it is up to date. By the way, Bitdefender keeps its program up to date by itself, so you don't even have an update button. Now, while Kaspersky is updating, I can show you some of the settings. This has a much more in-depth settings menu than Bitdefender, but most of the premium features are not going to be available since this is the free version, but we can change some sensitivity settings in the file AV. I haven't done any of that. I've left everything as it came, factory settings, brand new install, no messing around whatsoever. We're up to date, so we can get started with the test. First, we're going to do a web prevention test to see how both of these programs fare against malware links. I have eight of them here. They're very recent, and we'll get started. So these are two systems running side by side, so we can run the test simultaneously. First link's loading now for both. Bitdefender has blocked the page. Kaspersky is still processing it. Web page resource was detected. Kaspersky over here seems to be processing something. And in the end, it too blocks the download. So both of our contenders are off to a good start. Let's go ahead and try the next link. Kaspersky blocks it immediately, and so does Bitdefender, so that's two out of two. Time for link number three. Kaspersky blocks the page right away, Bitdefender gets us to the download, but then it is blocked. So it was just a second's delay in the case of Bitdefender. Both blocked the web resource. Another block for Kaspersky. And same for Bitdefender again. So far, so good. I grabbed these links a few minutes before the test, so they're very recent. Most of them are missed by Chrome, but our AV products are doing the job and keeping us safe, which is really nice. Once again, both of these products are free and you can download them at the respective websites. That's another link, Bites the Dust. We're getting near the end now, and so far there has been no damage whatsoever. It's been a clean shape on both sides. It's going to be a hard-fought battle. Hope the FIFA World Cup Final is as close as this competition. All right, last link, and it seems Kaspersky has blocked it, so it takes the lead. 8 out of 8, all links blocked. We're still waiting for Bitdefender, and it blocks it too. So that is a perfect clean sheet for both our products here. All of these successfully blocked. So now we can move on to the next part of the test, which is probably going to be a lot more interesting. Before that, I will have to temporarily turn off the protection. Don't worry, this is just a standard thing. I do that in every test. I just get the files onto the host system, and then we're going to do a full scan. So we'll give these products a fair chance of detecting anything that they can. So all I have to do is go to my malware lab and drag in the samples. We'll do the same for Bitdefender. Now, since we're doing this side by side and both of these 
virtual machines have identical resources. They're essentially a clone of each other. So we can also compare the scan time for both the products. Although, I mean, you should note that it could be affected by which one takes priority over the other. It should be interesting to see nonetheless. So I'm going to do a right click context menu scan for both of these products. Before that though, I think I should change the way Kaspersky deals with threats. Because I think by default it might want to disinfect, but we're going to change that to delete. Any threats detected during the scan are going to be deleted by both our products, or at least quarantined, so we can check the numbers out. Context menu scan with Bitdefender gets a head start, and then with Kaspersky. Let's see who finishes first. Now, while the AV products are scanning, I just want to show you this is the original folder and it has 1,020 items. So that is the total number of malware samples that we're using. Now, a little bit about the samples. Most of these were collected today. Some of them are from yesterday. When you kind of try to rank these on the scale of how new they are, I think they're all within a week old. There will be a mixture of files that might be really new, almost zero day, and some of them might be two or three days old. Oh, and by the way, all of these are executables, except this one file, which is a JavaScript. I kept it because, well, JS is uh, fine. I mean, we have JS scripts all the time running and destroying systems. Fair representation. Now, some of these may be broken or may have other dependencies, which is why they may not execute in the later part of the test. But don't worry, the final judgment that I make or the final comparison or the results are always based on the infections on the system and not how many files are left. In the end, we're going to look at both the systems and see which one is more infected. And that is how we're going to decide the winner, if at all, either of them are infected. Let's hope there is a bit of a differentiator because we all want winners and losers, right? I mean, nobody wants a tie. A tie in a grand final would be a little bit disappointing. Maybe, maybe not. You tell me in the comments. Bitdefender clocks in at 4 minutes and 15 seconds, something that I think is going to be really hard for Kaspersky to beat, given that it's saying I have about 10 minutes left on the scan. Kaspersky does seem to do a much more in-depth scan. It actually scans a lot more inside the files than Bitdefender does, so it's not necessarily a bad thing. It really depends on your frame of reference. While Kaspersky is scanning, we can also go through the removal process for Bitdefender, since Bitdefender does have a separate removal process and for most of the threats it detected. Also a lot of you might ask if we had only 1020 files how can there be 1043 and why does the scan file show 3304? Again this is a very common question. It has to do with how the files are structured. So a lot of these malware files are self-extracting archives meaning the executable itself might be a setup file and might have like 20 files inside and when the AV reports the number of scan files sometimes it reports the total number including all the numbers inside which is why the count is usually a lot higher so the count is not going to match but that is perfectly normal now here's something interesting to note uh, Bitdefender actually crashed midway in the removal process stability is not a big strength for Bitdefender and uh, this is true especially for the free AV product it doesn't get as many updates hopefully we're going to get it back up and working again it just said services were not responding you need to restart your PC and that's what I'm doing right now but just wanted to let you guys know since this happened during the test the Kaspersky scan is now finished and it seems to have dealt with most of the detected threats too there's only one that is not processed so I'm just going to resolve this delete and there we go Kaspersky is done now isn't that funny? Yes, that's why they say slow and steady wins the race. The Bitdefender crash means that it's actually going to take longer to finish. And I'm going to add this that the Kaspersky product does seem a lot more polished in terms of the basic GUI and also the functionality. It has a lot more settings, seems much more stable, whereas Bitdefender is a little bit shaky. I mean, it, the Bitdefender free AV didn't even have exclusions until recently. It could just be my experience, but it's something to keep in mind, certainly. Now, the funny thing is Kaspersky has actually left a lot of files. We have 455 files there. Bitdefender seems to resolve them in steps. <laughs> Both of these products are taking a long time here. 
pit defender goes through the removal process and then comes back and says, hey, there's still half of these files. And I'm like, why? I asked you to delete all of them. And since we do have some time while the defenders are moving, I'm just going to scan this folder again just to be sure that Kaspersky isn't going to detect anymore. Here's another glitch with Bitdefender Free Antivirus. It seems 191 items cannot be resolved. I've gone through this like three times already. It comes up with the same number. I go and click few files. I click on choose action. Then I click on delete for all of them and it just doesn't work. I'm going to try one last time and I'm going to move to quarantine. If this doesn't work, then we're just going to go with whatever it has actually removed. Ah, quarantine did the trick. Finally, we're done. Let's see what we have left. On Bitdefender's side, it's only 38 items. It's remarkable. That's an exceptionally good detection ratio, especially for these files. But on Kaspersky's side, we have a whopping 455. So in terms of detection ratio, we have only one winner here. Kaspersky's detection ratio is 55.4% compared to Bitdefender's 96.2%. What is happening here? I thought Kaspersky was pretty close in, in terms of detection ratio. It could just be that these samples are showing a much larger variance. But again, that's just too huge of a difference to ignore. But keep in mind, the detection ratio doesn't matter as much. What matters more is what happens now. When I actually turn the products back on, and start executing these files. This is the actual real-time protection test, and also a test of zero-day components if they have any. So as you can see, I've turned on Bitdefender, and I've also turned on Kaspersky. I'm just going to show you in settings. And now we will execute some of these malware samples. We'll see how these products react and whether or not the system gets infected. With Bitdefender, it seems all of the files left over are some sort of adware setup. Our system just restarted for Bitdefender, which is not a good sign. On the Kaspersky side, malware was detected and blocked, which is interesting. Kind of suggests that the cloud came into play. Woohoo, again, another detection for Kaspersky, so watch as the tables turn. And again, active malware detected, so Kaspersky's doing really well in the zero-day department to make up for the lack of signatures. We're going to continue with the test. Of course, Bitdefender has a huge advantage here just because it has a lot fewer files to deal with, thanks to its superior signatures. Although it seems Kaspersky is doing quite well when it comes to detecting some of the malware that it missed, that Bitdefender did detect. That's a close call. You can't take your eyes off this. Come on, this is better than most of the football matches we had this year. So interestingly, on the Bitdefender side too, it seems Bitdefender has removed a lot more of these files ever since we actually started the testing, which is really interesting. I didn't even notice it until now. So again, both these products kicking in and doing a lot of work, even in the zero-day test. Don't think that just because this is the free AV product that the scan results are at the end of it and they don't have any other protection methods. I think Bitdefender still uses active protection. Kaspersky doesn't advertise any zero-day component, but it does seem to be picking up a lot of stuff, so I'm guessing that's just the cloud. 
but whatever it is, it does seem to be doing a lot of work. So I think we've run enough files on both systems. Now I'm just going to finish whatever's left and then we're going to just disinfect and restart for Kaspersky, give it the best chance to remove any malware that might be on the system. Bitdefender has blocked a phishing attempt, partially blocking some of these threats that have uh, made it into the system. So I'll let both of these systems run, I'll let both of the AVs do their job, then we're going to reboot, get rid of the samples on the desktop and see if any of our systems got infiltrated with the second opinion scans and then we'll take you right to the results, so stay tuned for that. The results are in and you won't believe it. This is one of the most amazing tests I've ever conducted. Remember how low Kaspersky's detection ratio was? Well, guess what? Kaspersky actually edges it in the end. Hitman Pro reports clean on Kaspersky and finds a few PUPs when it comes to Bitdefender. We have uh, MyPony, which has a lot of separate files, but it's essentially just one PUP. But apart from that, both these products have maintained a clean sheet. Which is quite remarkable, especially on Kaspersky's front, because I saw so many alerts and so many error messages when the system was restarting and the advanced disinfection was going on. It felt like a complete mess. But after the restart, both these systems are essentially as good as new. What more can you ask for from free products? I mean, this is quite remarkable. Who won? That is so difficult to say. I would generally base that on the end results based on who had more infections, but in this case it seems so unfair given that Bitdefender detected so many more threats in the actual scan, and then also during the scan it actually updated and detected some more, achieving a remarkable detection ratio. But then at the end you see Kaspersky's system is completely clean and Bitdefender has this one PUP. I don't know what to say guys, I'm gonna call this a tie? The result I regretted at the beginning, but there's just no better way to put it. If you want high detection ratio, more simplistic product, go with Bitdefender. If you want a more stable product with more options, go with Kaspersky. So again, great results. I'm happy to recommend either of these two products. And check out the pro versions as well, because you're going to get a lot more options there. I don't have any deals for Kaspersky right now, but I do have a discount for Bitdefender, so check that out in the description. I have an affiliate link for them. I wish I had one for Kaspersky too. If I had one, I would just put it there. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this test. It's really fun conducting it. It's a long video. I'm exhausted, but it was worth the time, and it was definitely a lot of fun. If you like this kind of stuff, please subscribe to the Peace Security channel and consider supporting me on Patreon. This takes a lot of time and effort to conduct these things. Most importantly, like and share the video if you enjoyed it. This is Leo from the PC Security channel, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.